Okay, the next uh, video we want to uh, demonstrate for you is standing and walking. It sounds simple, but uh, in order to make it integrative, there's some principles involved that we want to discuss. So let's start with the feet when we're standing still. And I'm going to zoom in a little bit so you can see. And when we're standing still, essentially we've got two arches that are stacked on each other. What we're facing right now on the tattooed foot is the lateral, out, the outside arch of the foot. The inside arch near the big toe sits on top of that arch. So if this outside arch is short, the inside arch is going to follow it. So the idea of getting length in the side of the foot by rolling it outwards, go ahead and roll your foot outward so you can expose the, ex the lateral arch on the ground, and then rolling it back in will help break up some of the tissue that builds up on the, on the foot. Okay, the next thing I want to talk about is when you're standing still. Go ahead and turn and face me now. <laughs> yeah, we've got a nice uh, visitor there. Okay, now what Chris is going to do is put all her weight on her medial arch that's a point right between below her big toe and the bottom of her heel right at the center. Okay, so right in the middle of the heel, the bottom of the big toe, if she's standing on that correctly, then the feet on the outside are going to feel like they're floating. Okay, just like that. So that in that position, she's dissipating all of her weight right down that center line between her knees where uh, her center of gravity is. Okay. The, the next thing is, go ahead and, uh, and we'll see it from that side as well. Okay, good. And then from the back, fine. Okay, now turn back straight toward us so we can see. And notice when she be initiates a walk, her knees are going to be pointing straight ahead with the feet. And when the feet plop down, stop right there. They're going to plop down on that spot that we just talked about, right beneath the big toe and the heel. Now, what happens there, it's like a leaf spring on a car. We need that arch <clears throat> when we're walking, but as soon as we lift, uh, lift the foot up, create the arch, and put it back down, the foot's going to be essentially flat. So the model we're looking for is a foot in a very loose arrangement, like a bag of bones, that will properly construct itself when it lifts up and sets down. So think of the foot as landing like a cat walks, just picking it up and plopping on the leaf spring of the foot, which is the medial arch, and the lateral arch will take care of itself. Perfect. Okay, now just initiate a walk toward me. Nice and slow. The next thing you'll notice is with the, with the pelvis free and loose, that uh, the pathway that the feet trace on the ground will be nearly a straight line. Okay, now turn back and walk away. Now stop right there for a second, and I'm going to demonstrate. So this area of the pelvis, stay right there. <coughs> is where the sacroiliac joint is. So when she's walking, it should be tracing a figure eight, allowing the feet to go in the front so that the, the central path is a straight line. Now, why is that the case? The reason that happens is you're, if your foot is going out wide when you're walking or everting, you're not dissipating gravity through your feet the way they were designed to work. So the closer the feet are to the center line when you're walking, the more effectively you're distributing the weight from your body into the ground. The other thing to note is when you're integrated when you're walking in an integrative way there's no reason to, to speed walk. Walking very slowly, keeping your head on top, the shoulder blades in their pockets, and the knees straight ahead, landing on the correct place of the foot is actually not quite as easy as it looks. So give that, a give that a practice on a level ground, and once you got that right, start moving up and down hills. Have fun walking. It's a, it's a wonderful exercise you can do the rest of your life.